In this tutorial, we'll take a tour of the workflow designer. The designer allows you to define every aspect of a workflow, including the recipient routing, the recipient roles, such as approver or signer, email notifications, the documents you want to include in the workflow, the specification of input fields to pre-fill information, and it allows a fully customized send experience for the user with even customized instructions. So let's start off by accessing the workflow designer. You have to be logged in as an administrator, then click on account and then click on workflows. So let's create a new workflow by clicking on the plus sign here and take a look at the elements. So this is the name of the current workflow and this circle here will be gray when a workflow is draft or inactive and it'll be green for an active workflow. The buttons over here are used to close, save, or activate the current workflow. Now there are six sections for defining a workflow. So let's start off with workflow info. This is where you enter the name for the workflow and you'll notice that as I edit this, it updates in the top banner. You can enter any instructions for the sender here and you can use basic HTML tags for formatting and you can determine whether the workflow will be available for all groups or a specific group here. These icons allow you to duplicate or delete a saved workflow. Now moving on to agreement info. This is where you can completely control and customize the sender's experience. You can change the labels over certain fields by clicking on the pencil icon. You can specify a default agreement name, signer message, CC email or emails, as well as set the minimum or maximum number of CCs that can be included. This checkbox, if selected, will allow the sender to change the CC email when using the workflow. You can choose whether or not the sender can specify the recipient's language and can also set the default language from this drop-down list. You can turn on the option to allow the sender to set a password on the downloaded PDF. You can make this a requirement if you're perhaps dealing with confidential information in the workflow. You can turn on the completion deadline and enter the default number of days that a recipient has to complete signing. This allows the sender to preview and add fields prior to sending and checking this box will turn that option on as default. Now let's click on recipients and I'll show you how easy it is to set up a recipient routing for your workflow. To add a recipient, just click on the add icon, this little plus sign right here, and you can choose to add either a signer or approver. When I add a recipient, by default, the editable checkbox is checked, and you'll see that if I uncheck this, a red outline appears indicating that an email address is required. With editable selected, the requirement is removed because the sender can add the email address when using the workflow. So each recipient must also have a unique label, which is specified here. I can continue adding recipients in sequence anywhere in the routing by clicking on any add icon and choosing either signer or approver. Now I have these three recipients set up in sequence. So let's take a look at adding recipients in parallel, which means that they can sign or approve at the same time. Click on the add icon and then choose parallel branches. I'm going to give this a unique name and then click on OK. So now recipient one and three can sign in parallel. Let's add an approver in parallel. I click on the add icon, choose parallel branches, Again, I'm entering a unique label. I'm going to switch the role to approver and then click on OK. Deleting a recipient is really easy. Just hover over and click on the trash can. Let's take a look at the attributes for each recipient. Just hover over and click on the pencil icon. So first of all, the editable checkbox is checked by default. If you uncheck it, then you'll have to enter an email address for the recipient. Leaving it checked means that the sender using the workflow will enter the email address, or you can also enter a default email address here that the sender can change. You can change the role here. 
You can choose whether or not the recipient is required and you can set an identity verification option for the signer and the sender won't be able to change this if you define it here. Now let's take a look at the emails section. This is where you'll set the email notifications that will be sent out when certain events occur during the life of the transaction. So we have a list of events here and choose if you want to turn on an email notification for the party in the transaction by checking the box. And the parties included are the sender, recipients, any CC'd parties and any delegate. Next up, we have the documents section. This is where you add documents to your workflow. The document title will display in the documents area of the send page. Click on this icon to upload a library document. And this is the default document name. You can edit this if you want. And you can also leave this blank to allow the sender to upload the document on the send page. Checking required means the document must be included in the agreement. You can add multiple documents using this plus icon and you can delete documents using the X here. Finally, let's take a look at the sender input fields section. This section allows you to add fields that can be mapped to fields in a text tag document or library document and pre-filled with information by the sender. So to add a field, click on the plus icon enter a title for the field and, and then enter the text tag name or the name of the field in the library document that you want to map to. You can optionally add a default value. The sender can then pre-fill information into these fields prior to sending. Select required if you want this to be required. And if you want the sender to be able to edit the information, then click editable. You can add multiple fields by clicking add field and again you can delete by clicking on the X.